they don't on Grace and where they have status as far as tomorrow? Uh, they're both making progress. Um, neither one of them will play tomorrow. When it lurks, it lurks, you know, I see him using the putty. You know, kind of keep it, keep it a certain out. I'm curious what that even does, because I never have known what that actually does with it. I'm the basketball coach, so I don't know that I would be qualified to give a proper answer, so I'm going to pass. Mike, when you were in San Antonio with Pop, um, obviously David Robinson there, Tim Duncan there, was there anything you took from him about how to coach higher level players in this, in this league? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, all the coaches that have come through San Antonio, being around the great players, um, you know, kind of starting with David Robinson in the early days and then drafting Tim Duncan, uh, you know, they coach their players. Uh, Pop coaches, coaches his best players. He coaches the 15th guy. Um, you just got to coach everybody. And, um, you know, I think be honest and straightforward, and, um, direct with them, and uh, guys usually appreciate that. Is it challenging to motivate guys at that level? No, I mean, I think, you know, the thing we always talk about is just finding guys who are naturally competitive or competitors. And competitors don't need, um, or that, that is their motivation. You know, they, they, love, they love to compete um, and do everything that goes into that. And so when you find those kinds of guys, uh, you lean into that. Coach, when you look at the first two preseason games, you guys have gotten up a good number of threes, but what have you liked about the way you've been able to generate some of those? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's certainly just a mentality that it's important to us. Uh, we have, you know, great shooters and guys that are very capable, but I like the ball movement that's usually leading to it. I like the pace that, and the, and the you know, playing fast that is oftentimes leading to it. Uh, guys getting to the paint, um, leading to threes. So, you know, there's always things that you got to do to generate your threes, um, and hopefully we're doing that at a high level. You look at a guy like Royce, he kind of flies under the radar sometimes, but willing shooter and on the other end willing to play multiple positions, guard up with size. What do you like to do with this? Yeah, I mean, a lot of what you just said. You know, I think it does start with a defensive mentality, uh, his willingness to guard and take the challenge, and not just on his own guy, but uh, team wise, and, you know, communicate and cover. Um, and offensively, you know, his willingness to shoot has been great, but he's also a guy that gets to a next action, keep the ball moving, has an energy, has an IQ uh, that can be really good for a team. With Ryan, there was a lot made in the draft process about his unwillingness to shoot at times. We have not seen that on the court at all with you guys. How have you seen him kind of accept the mentality you guys are looking for out of him? Yeah, no, I mean, I think from day one, you know, we've talked to him about, you know, how he's going to grow and how he's going to develop here. And, um, you know, we've been, you know, very encouraging with, uh, and it's not always going to be perfect. It's, you know, um, growth usually takes some, some progress and then maybe stall out or backwards and, and then more progress. And, um, but he's been really good. His work ethic's off the charts, his IQ, his willingness to listen. Um, and so he's just embraced everything that we've asked him to do. In your experience with young players looking to develop their three-point shot, what leads to success the most? Um, you know, I mean, I think there's a talent. Um, you know, but I think there's a mentality, too. He's got to play through everything, um, play with a lot of confidence, know that we believe in him, um, and his teammates believe in him. Okay, one more. We're done? So you look right. at the film session, Kevin was talking about how you went through it with them about the pick and roll coverage. How intentional are you during those sessions to get the guys to understand what they need to do? Yeah, no, hopefully, um, you know, as a coach, definitely very conscientious of, you know, being intentional, hopefully being logical, things that make sense. Um, make your point and hopefully move on. Um, and these guys have been great about uh, you know the carryover from film to to the court. And um, you know I think I think all of us learn differently, but the visual of film is is usually really powerful for for everybody. Thanks, Al. All right, thank you guys. Um, you know, get some live action in. Um, it's just competing, competing and, and getting better. Um, so yeah, these these are these are good days for us. Who got the better over? Uh, we split actually. We split. We split one one. So we uh, they ain't let us. They ain't let us go game three to, to <laughs> you know to figure it out. But it was good. You mentioned you didn't know. You know you didn't have an idea of just how much the, the offensive team put in. Yeah. Uh, but just knowing that what you've already put in now, how much of that like wow we got more to yeah. add, and how much of that give guys 
more Yeah, I mean, we, we have the utmost confidence um, in Bud and, and in his system and what he wants out of us. Um, and at the end of the day, it's basketball. So you're still going to, you know, just you have to make plays and have to make reads um, on the court. Um, a lot of it is kind of the structure that he's putting in place. But um, at the same time, it's basketball at the end of the day. Um, so we're confident in, you know, all of our abilities um, individually and collectively. Um, but at the same time, we trust, you know, Bud 100% in the more that he's putting in each and every day. And um, looking forward to, uh, you know, where that goes. Uh, I see fearlessness. Um, you know, taking the shots with 100% confidence, playing defense aggressively, um, not flinching. So um, that's that's huge, especially as a rookie. You know, coming in your first games, you're a lot of times I think you see guys a little timid or unsure. He's extremely confident. Um, he's open to uh, I wouldn't say you know criticism necessarily, but um, teaching, like just some of the older guys talking to him, trying to help him out. Um, he's open to that and, and applying it right away. Uh, so he's a student of the game as well. And, um, you know, he's a worker. He's in here early, staying late. Um, so those are the things you like to see. And uh, he's just, yeah, he's been extremely confident um, and fearless is kind of the, the way I would, I would sum it up. Have you seen his, his confidence grow and his shooting since you've been here? Yeah, I've n I haven't seen him, you know, lack confidence as a shooter since I've been here. So, um, obviously the college game is, is one thing. Um, but since the day I stepped foot stepped foot in Phoenix, he's, he's, not, he's knocked down shots. So, um, that's not, that hasn't been like a, a focal point for us to, um, you know, where it's like, oh, Ryan's knocking down. Like, he's, he's making shots. Shoot him with confidence. Um, we trust we trust in him. We trust in the, in the work he's putting in. So uh, you know that's not really a focal point for us of or, or a surprise, I should say. He's he's made shots since I've been here. Um, and I'm expecting him that you know that to continue. Last week, Matata uh, also said that you and uh, Nurk were basically talking also after practice to help him out. Yeah. You know, basically schooling him on the, the slips. Yeah. Find those pocket passes. How do you feel like he's grasped that in those first couple games? Uh, extremely well, extremely well. He's another guy. He's 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 a learn. He wants to learn. He's he's a sponge. He wants to uh, uh, soak up knowledge. Um, you know, from from any of the vets, any of the coaches. I mean, he applies it right away. So, um, you know, he's played extremely well the first two games. Um, and he he wants to get better. He wants to continue to improve. He wants to learn. And so, you know, when you got guys like that, it's easy to you know pull them aside five ten minutes after practice or before practice or. You see something during practice, you want to continue to help them um, along this kind of learning curve of the NBA and kind of figuring stuff out. Um, but he's playing extremely well for us, and we're going to need it. Yeah, Detroit historically had a bad year last year, mm -hmm. but facing him again tomorrow night, so what was that you noticed in the first game the difference in last year when we faced Detroit? Yeah, uh, just, a, just another year uh, of experience. Um, they got... Uh, you know, a good a core group there that, that has stayed together for a couple years now. So um, their chemistry is just going to continue to build. Um, obviously, everyone knows how good, you know, Cade is. Um, Jaden looked really good. Um, you know, JD holding down the paint. So they got they got pieces and um, a core that's been together for a few years now. And naturally, your chemistry is, is going to get better. Um, you know, and so it'll be it'll be good to see them continue to uh, take steps forward. I guess the Lakers there was a two minute stretch where you guys went smaller by and it affected my game for the center. What did you like in that group and to see about the space you had as the Yeah, um, it's just space and it's a different look. Um, different kind of wrinkles that you can uh, that you can, you know, throw at the, the defense um, when you got when you're small. Um, and some different actions that we can get into. And again, it's still early, so we're figuring it out. We're figuring out chemistry. We're figuring out chemistry. Uh, we're figuring out different looks that we can give and different actions that we can try and, and get to. So um, for us, that's what we're using preseason for is to you know kind of gel and mesh and, and figure out our chemistry and different lineups and stuff like that. With Brian and what you were mentioning earlier, just how he served as a complimentary piece amongst like the, some of the best players in the team out there, just how he talked about it. Yeah, it's been it's been great. Uh, Rai has been awesome so far. Um, again, fearless. Uh, been fitting right in, playing extremely well. Uh, you can't tell he's a rookie out there. Uh, so for us, that's that's you know that's what we're gonna need, um, and that's what you know we're expecting out of him because we see the the work he puts in. So it's not surprising to us. Um, 
And so, yeah, looking forward to continuing to see him grow and get better. Monte, we talked to Monte, he was saying, like, you and him as undersized guards have to find ways to stick in the league. Yeah. Like, defensively, what do you kind of focus on to make sure that you're not going to be the guy that's going to be targeted? Yeah, uh, just competing. I'm understanding our system um, and, our, and our philosophies on defense, um, and then just being extremely active. Um, you know, whether it's deflections, steals, um, con you know, contesting, high hands, um, just nothing easy on the defensive end. Um, and just making sure you're competing and, uh, you know, you got to be, you know, scrappy, tough, uh, things of that nature. So. There's been a lot of talk about assist to turnover ratio with you and yeah. any friendly wagers on who's going to have No, no. I hope, I hope he, he beats me this year, honestly. That means we're in a good spot. Um, that means we're in a good spot. So, uh, but no, nah, no, no wagers, um, and I don't know how much Tay looks at that during like the year or when he's playing or, and stuff like that. Um, I know for me, I don't necessarily pay attention to the ratio. It's more so the strictly the turnovers for me. Like I try to just keep my turnovers down. Whatever the the ratio is is a bonus. Um, obviously, you want a lot of, of assists. Um, but so I'm sure it'll it'll come up at some point. But um, for us, it's it's team focused. Like we're looking in the team the team turnover column, and if that if that can be you know lower, you know that's kind of the focus for us right now. And we know we we can play a big part in that and kind of you know help fix that um, from last year. And go from there. How do you balance the final the competition with Monte? You're leading your teams on the floor against each other in practice, making each other better, but also. It's almost like a quarterback room as well. Yeah, 100%. Like, how, how does this dynamic of that relationship? It's been great. Uh, me and Tay, you know, we go back. We've played against each other, uh, you know, for a long time now. Um, similar games. So, uh, for us, it's always been, you know, a mutual respect. And so now, yeah, it's definitely like a quarterback room where we're helping each other out. Uh, we use practice, you know, when we're competing against each other to, uh, to push each other to get better. Um, but at the same time, like, there's times on the court where, I might see something and tell him, or he might see something and tell me, even if it's in the scrimmage um, and things of that nature, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we both play for the Suns, and so we're trying to just improve and make each other better uh, for the better of the team. Tyus, uh, on Tuesday, not sure if you got to go away, but AJ scored his 21 points off of one dribble. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, is that kind of a product of, like, the offensive structure and kind of you and Monte's job to, you know, just your stars, the, the easy shot. Yeah, um, it's it's a little bit a, a product of that, and it's also a product of uh, Kevin Durant. Like he scores the ball at a, a high high level, um, and sometimes it, it he makes it look effortless. Um, you know, so he's getting to his spots, um, catching and shooting. Um, but at the, at the same time, that is you know a product. Some of it's a product of the system, and and why me and Tay were brought here is to make sure that. Um, him, Book, and Brad can get easy shots and not have to work quite as hard, uh, you know, to, to get their looks and to put the ball in the basket. Okay, when you look at the way that this year they're going for the assist, I think you guys are third in the last game. What's working in that sense of guys getting shots? Uh, just knowing our spots. I feel like we only going to get better. Uh, we watched some film today in our practice. We put in a couple new sets for spacing. Uh, we just going to play fast the whole year. So when we do slow it down, though, we just got to be smarter. But we want to get up more threes and share the ball. So. I mean, I, I can really can't predict that part of it. But I know Coach got uh, all five of us playing free. Everybody is confident when they open, let it fly. So um, with him giving us the free range, one through five, whoever out there to just play ball, and if you open, let it go, the numbers should increase. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, like I said, it's going to be a journey, and um, we're excited to see what, what it comes with. You've been against KD for your whole career. Is there anything you learn about him being his teammate now? Uh, that he just going to install you confidence. You know, um, you know, when you're playing with a guy like that, something like that when I played with Joker, he would say, look, I know I'm that guy, but if you open, just make plays, go out there and hoop. And KD the same way. Like, you know, he get on you for not shooting. So um, that's what you want to – your best player, that's what, that's what you want to – you know, hear from him, and it's going to boost everybody's confidence around us. So that's what I learned about him. Yeah, yeah, quarterback, uh, for sure. I got to know not just my spots or not a spot. Like, say we run the play for KD, I got to know where Brad's supposed to be or Grayson or Mason. It ain't just me getting the ball to KD. So um, it's a lot of, you know, on the plate, but. That's what quarterbacks got to do. We got to be able to know where everybody's supposed to be and also know where the defense is going to be. Uh, we ain't started watching film together yet, but, you know, we, we talk a lot. Um, after practice, we work out together. So we just pick each other brave when we go out there. He just ran his team. I ran my team. We competed, and uh, so we move on. <laughs> what do you make of what Ryan and uh, Oso are doing? They doing? they doing great things. I think Oso just had his best practice by far. Um, you know, he just bring energy, and uh, he's smart for a kid just coming out of college, knowing what reads to make and when to slip and when to hold the screen and catch lives. It's, he way poised beyond his years. So, and then Ryan, you know, he can he's a two-way defender. Um, he can make threes, and he's athletic. You can't teach that. Have you and Luke had any banter yet about 2021 and facing off the playoffs? Nah, I, I left that in 2021. That, that wasn't too good. I, I can't even talk about that. But, uh, yeah, it, it's all fun and games. When I first got here, we brought it up, bickering back and forth. But he's like, yeah, we swept y'all. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we swept y'all last year, too. So we all <laughs> go back and forth. But it's love to be on the same side. So. Is there something you learned about his game specifically playing against him in the playoffs? Uh, Nah, not really. He's just a competitor, bro. Book is a guy, he always want to win. He chippy. He talk, he talk trash, and he back it up. So I, I, I'm just happy I'm on this side with him, you know, this time. Was this a big fit for you, being a point guard? Say it again? Uh, big three here. Yeah. It was just, when you got the call, it was mm -hmm. just like a no-brainer, but just like having to hear them on the floor. Yeah, for game. sure. I mean, especially with, you know, my ability to play in the pick and roll and throw lives and also can make the in-between game. I know a lot of attention will be on them, so um, just having a live threat, you know, the space is the floor going to be so spaced, so it'll be able to show and display what I'm good at with finding shooters. On a break, we was in Michigan. I had Book running the lane and Kevin, and they both was yelling, like, I'm right here, I'm right here. So you got to make a choice. But it feels good to know if you pass it to any of those guys, you know, it, nine, out of, nine times out of ten is going to be a, a bucket. So it's fun. It make my job easier, make everybody else's job easier, knowing where the bigs can rebound the ball and just push the break too. We ain't got to wait all the time for the outlet. We all can run and show our speed and just show our IQ. So it's good to have two bigs that can do that. With the way that the rotations work out, both and Katie will check out in the first quarter. There will be moments out there where it's you and Brad together. How yeah. much can you get back to Washington and the chemistry yeah. you build in those moments? I mean, the chemistry, you know, is there. Like, you know, uh, the last when he hit the buzzer beater, and you know we just was doing eye contact. He tried to go back door. That was our first look. And then I got the ball screen, came off, probe, probe. I knew Ivy was gonna help, and I knew where Brad liked it. That's his corner over there. So I just hit him in the shot pocket, and you know when when I'm out there with him, I know where calls to get him going. Especially you know sometimes he might not have a lot of looks early on. You know with the big three, so that'll be his time to kind of get back to that Washington rally build and, and pick up that score. Gerald's question earlier, that's a big thing for you with Book and Kevin, right? Mm -hmm. Figuring out their spots where yeah. you like it, like you know with Brad already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've had a whole year experience with Brad um, starting in the backcourt with him, so it's pretty much simple, you know, with him. He likes to play in space and, you know, work in that mid-range area and, and make three. So I feel like the biggest thing, he's like having fun. You know, he's excited for the season. He's happy, he's healthy. So I just feel, feel like we all are excited. You know, we got a new – uh, coaching staff, so the city of Phoenix, you know, it should be excited because we are. You, you and Final question. The, uh, the low assist to turnover yeah. ratio. How much, how much is that a skill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I broke my record like three times in college. So, yeah, I mean, every year, me and Tyus was either one or two. So, but it's funny, we just go out there, we, we ain't the most athletic guys, so we got to think with our mind, you know, we're not flying around, jumping, dunking on people. So we just got to play the game a different way, you know, and just play it the right way. We draw two, kick it, we open, shoot it. Simple game. So, sure. Six months in.